So basically, when we have a, a two force member that has an arc like this, okay, it's either under still either under under tension or compression, okay. So what you have to do is just to connect both ends, and the uh, the connected line now become the line of action. So like this, between both ends, you can connect it, okay. And this one is the example of the uh, uh, the member under compression. Okay. Uh, actually, it is the same thing. If you have a, a two force member, okay, two force member that has this kind of shape, it is possible because uh, in order to become a two force member, uh, the shape is not has to be a straight like that, a straight line like that. So it can be like this as well, as long as. Uh, the force is only happening at both ends, and uh, it's either tension or compression. Okay, so the force is happening at both ends only, like this. And uh, if we know that from the beginning that it's only a pin, both end is pin uh, without uh, friction. Okay, it must be a two force member. So for this kind of case. You just need to connect both ends, and this is the line of action of the force. You get it, son? Yes, sir. How do you uh, how you solve the previous problem? Then uh, I kind of did uh, like this one. I just make a straight line, but I couldn't find the angle. So. Ah, so actually, you you did it correctly. Right? Uh, make a straight line, right? Yeah, I just assumed that it was just a straight line and turns out it was correct, but I cannot find the angles. Uh, yeah, actually, based on the discussion uh, from the, uh, uh, in the in the lecture, group lecture, uh, the uh, WhatsApp group of the lecturer, uh, I believe the hardest one will be, we believe the hardest one will be number three. And actually, it's not that hard, but the way to find the angle is the hardest one. Okay, uh, so actually for number three, it is hard because uh, you have to find the angle. For number one and number two, uh, we believe that the, the problem is simple enough. Any other question about the exam? Uh, it is already seven past uh, ten past seven. Uh, a minute. And only 22 of you that come. <laughs> Any other question about the exam? Apakah ada pertanyaan lain terhadap uh, ujiannya? Okay, so basically this is the way to handle two force member that is not straight. Okay, just connect both ends. And the connected line now become the uh, the force uh, the force line of action. That's it. Okay. So uh, this one is very important as well uh, in order for us to solve for the uh, frame and machine. Okay? Because the first thing, one of the first thing that you're supposed to do to solve for the frame and machine, okay, to solve for the frame and machine is to uh, determine whether the system has two force member or not. If, if it has two force member, replace it with external force. Replace it with a force uh, that representing that member, okay? So basically that's one of the thing that you're supposed to do uh, in the frame of machine case, okay? Try to see whether it has two force member. If it has two force member, Replace the member with the external uh, with the force which representing that particular member. Okay, and and you have to remember two force member not necessarily has to be straight. Okay, two force member not necessarily has to be straight. It can be bent like this. 
or it can be uh, in an angle like this. Like, okay. Any other question? Okay, uh, I think. I will start sharing the screen on this frame. Can you see my PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, let's start the, the discussion on the uh, on the frame and machine. Okay. Uh, I believe I already uh, give some kind of introduction on the frame and machine. Okay, so uh, we have a lot of structures in our real world that actually representing a frame and machine, like this. Okay, like this, and uh, how to differentiate between frame and machine? Okay, frame. Uh, it's normally is designed to support to support uh, to support the applied loads and usually fixed in position. Okay, so something like this is normally a uh, we call it as a frame. But machine, on the other hand, uh, it normally consists of moving parts and which designed to transmit input force or couples to output force or couples, like this one. So. The main difference between frame and machine. Frame is normally stationary, uh, but machine normally has an input force, and then it will be transmitted into uh, output force or output uh, couples like that. Okay, but uh, you don't have to worry about this. How to differentiate between those two? Because uh, our main aim in this particular class is to solve the problem, okay? The way to solve the frame problem and machine problem is more or less the same, okay? The step-by-step -step to solve it is exactly the same. Actually, it's just like this, okay? As I told you at the beginning, we have to determine whether the frame or the machine has to force member or not, okay? And then after you, you, you determine whether it has a two force member or not, if it has a two force member, then you have to replace that member uh, with a force which representing that member. Then the remaining non two force member, the remaining multi force member, you have to isolate one by one and draw free body diagram one by one. That's the main idea on how to solve a frame and machine problem, okay? Identify two force member, replace the two force member with force representing the member, okay? Then the remaining multi-force member, okay? Uh, try to isolate it one by one, okay? Create one free body diagram for uh, one remaining multi-force member. So if you have a two or three remaining multi-force member like that, you have to create two or three free body diagram, okay? Which representing each uh, remaining multi-force member, okay? After you draw the free body diagram, Try to calculate the total number of the unknowns, calculate the number of available equation, and see whether it match or not. If it match, then you can try to solve it. Okay, so basically that's that's the way to solve the frame and machine problem. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> last week I already discussed about this. This is one of the uh, most 
sim at the simplest case of a two force member and <clears throat> uh, from this particular problem okay we can see actually the uh, Davi Rizky hello Davi Hello, Davi Rizky. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, Davi. Uh, for this particular problem, Davi, do we have a two force member here or not, Davi? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, AB. AB, yes, correct. AB is two force member. So that's the first step to solve this particular problem. Okay, AB is two force member. So we can replace AB with external force, with force representing uh, D member AB. So now, if we draw the free body diagram, okay, if we draw the free body diagram, it become like this, okay? FAB now become external force, which representing the member AB. And because we have a pin here at C, so we have Cx and Cy, and then we have 200 Newton there. Okay. And when we take a look at this, uh, the remaining uh, multi-force member is just T member BC. That's why we only have one free body diagram here, which showing us the free body diagram of the member BC. Okay, because remember the first step, okay, identify the full two force member and then uh, isolate the remaining multi force member and draw free body diagram for each remaining multi force member. In this case, the remaining multi force member is just the, uh, is just the member BC or not. Why that? Okay, so now we have this particular free body diagram. Uh, Marcia, Virginia? Hello, Marcia. Uh, Marcia, I cannot hear you, Marcia. Do you have problem with your mic, Marcia? I think so. Seems like Marcia have a problem with the, her uh, mic. Okay, Fatima and Adil. Hello, Fatima. Hello, sir. Okay, Fatima. Uh, from this particular free body diagram, can you tell me how many unknowns that we have, uh, Fatima? Um, four, is it four? Four. What are those four, Fatima? You can see here, right? This this free body diagram. The free body diagram on the left. How many anons do we have there? Oh, from from the free body diagrams, it only three. Yes, of course. F, A, B, C, Y, and C, X. Yep. To determine the inons, uh, you have to take a look from the free body diagram. Okay, Fatima. So this one is only have uh, three anons, F, A, B, C, X, C, Y. And uh, based on your uh, knowledge before, right? One free body diagram uh, in the one uh, from one free body diagram, how many equation that you, how many equilibrium equation that you can use, Fatima? Hello, Fatima. Uh, three. Three, yeah. Sigma fx equal to zero, sigma fy equal to zero, and sigma moment equal to zero. So basically, in this case, the number of unknowns and the number of equation match, right, Fatima? Yes, sir. Hmm. So we can solve this problem. Okay, so basically, we can solve this problem just by using this one 
uh, only this uh, free body diagram. So you can see here, right? This is how to solve it because FA, because AB is two force members. So you can represent AB with the force uh, in the direction of that member. And then the remaining CXCY is there as well. We have three unknowns FAB, CXCY, and we have three equations as well to solve it. So we can solve it using sigma moment, sigma fx, sigma fy. Here, sigma moment that he use is sigma moment at c to solve for fab directly. Then after that, using sigma fx equal to zero to find cx and sigma fy equal to zero to find cy. Okay. So this is one example, one of the simplest case in the uh, our frame and machine. Okay, why I call it as a simplest problem because we only need to solve for one free body diagram only. Only one free body diagram in this case. Okay, now let's try to take a look at this particular problem. Okay, let's try to take a look at this particular problem. Uh, can anyone here find two force members in this particular problem? As usual, okay, when we try to solve for frame and machine problem, the first thing that we're supposed to do is to find the Two force member. <coughs> okay. Can anyone here tell me uh, how many uh, two force member in this particular problem? Jeffrey, hello Jeffrey. K61, okay, good Jeffrey. You already prepared for the uh, uh, introduction to engineering and design class. Hello Jeffrey. Hello Jeffrey, still not wrong, okay. Adam Ahmad, hello Adam. Yes, sir. Hello. Hello, uh, Adam. Can you find the two force member? Yeah. Uh, Jeffrey, can you find the Hello, Adam. Where is Adam? Hello, Adam. Uh, CB, sir. CB, yes, correct. CB is two force member. Okay. Two force member is very easy to determine, actually. As long as it, the force only happening at both ends, uh, most likely it will be two force member. And beside that, uh, the pin, okay, the pin is uh, frictionless. If the pin is frictionless, it always, do, it all, uh, and the force is only happening at both ends, it will be always a two force member. So PC here is two force member. So if PC is two force member, can we, uh, Adam, can we uh, simplify BC to, uh, a force representing that particular member, member Adam. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we can. So actually, uh, in the free body diagram, right? Uh, later, what you can do is drawing the free body diagram like this, and then at P, okay. At P, we can. Try to assume, OK, 
Okay, BC here is under tension, FBC. Or you can assume it's under compression as well. It's okay. okay, but for me, I will always try to assume the force member as under, under tension to make it simpler. Then we have AX and AY. <coughs> what force that we have? What other forces that we have here? Adam. Besides these three forces, Adam. The weight here. The I'm weight attention. actually, yeah. uh, in order to uh, solve for member AD, okay? So basically, here we only have a two member, okay? CB, BC, and AD. BC is two force member. AD is non two force member because it has a force in the middle at the B, at B because of FBC, okay? So AD is not two force member, but uh, AD is multi force member. So we can solve for the free body diagram of the AD and as usual, Adam, uh, there at T, we have pulley, right, Adam? Yes. Okay, if we have pulley, what we supposed to do to solve for that, that particular uh, particular case? Hello, Adam? For this one, the pulley has its a radius or not, Adam? Yes. Yes. Zero point one. Okay. So actually, if it has radius, we have two. We have two option. Okay. You can try to solve the reaction force at pin D first, or you can just draw the pulley into the system. Okay, you can just draw the pulley into the system. Yep, but as usual, okay, I always prefer because uh, most of the time the, the radius here is not uh, given like that. So normally what I will try to do is to solve for the pulley first. Uh, so later the force, I will move the force from the ropes to the uh to the join d like that okay adam uh from the pulley what forces that we have adam the tension and weight the weight, the weight downwards okay what else the weight is 50 kilograms so i will just use 10 okay so 500 what else the tension uh, tension Tension to the left. What else? At pin joint, there must be something, right? DY. DY. Pin, remember, this one is pin, okay? So we have DY and? DX. DX, yes, correct. So this one is tension. Okay. As usual, we can solve this using sigma. Fx equal to zero, sigma Fy equal to zero, and sigma moment equal to zero. Okay, sigma moment equal to zero. Sigma moment, if we use sigma moment at D equal to zero, what we will have later is T equal to 500 Newton. Then if we use sigma Fx to zero, sigma Fx, equal to zero, but we will have later dx is equal to t, equal to 500 Newton. And using sigma fy equal to zero, okay. What we will have later is dy equal to 500 Newton. Okay, now I want you to move it to uh, this free body diagram. Dx, dy, we can move it there, right? Hello? Yes, sir. Okay. 
So if I want to move the x and dy to member 80, uh, what is the direction of the x and dy there, Adam? Still the same, sir? Still the same with this one, you sure? Remember action and reaction, third Newton law. Hello? Also, it's the other way. Yeah, it's supposed to be the other way around. Remember, it's when, when you draw this, it, we cannot just same, uh, you, you cannot just copy the direction. So it's supposed to be the opposite direction. So dy equal to 500 Newton and dx is equal to 500 Newton. Okay, so this is the free body diagram of a member AD. Okay. Hello? Hello, Adam? Yes, sir. Hmm. So this is the free body diagram. And now I want you to check how many anodes that we have in the uh, free, free body diagram of a member AD here. <laughs> Hello, Adam. How many anodes, Adam, that we have here? Uh, three, sir. Three. Okay. What are those, Adam? AX, AY, and FPC. Okay, so we have three. Yeah, we have three, and we have three. Uh, we have three equation as well. Sigma FX equal to zero. Sigma FY equal to zero, and sigma moment equal to zero. Okay, you sing sigma moment at A equal to zero we will be able to find the value of FPC. Okay, then after that, using sigma FY equal to zero, we will be able to find AY, the value of AY. Using sigma FX, we will be able to, fail, uh, to find the value of AX. Okay, so that's the way to solve it. Okay, do you understand about it, Adam? Got it, sir. Uh, we have several problem example here. Okay, later uh, some of this problem will become your homework. So you can try to solve it by yourself. Okay. <clears throat> okay, for this particular problem, uh, let's discuss about this particular problem. Audrey, Audrey Putri. Hello, Audrey. Hi, sir. Okay, Audrey. Uh, try to take a look at this problem and try to check. As usual, try to check whether it has two force members. Does it have a two force member? Does it have a two force member, Audrey? Yes, I think. Hmm? Try to take a look. Just try to be very careful on this. And can you see whether it has a two force member or not? Can we? Um, hmm? I don't think so. Yep. Correct. Actually, it has no two force member. So all the member there is actually a multi-force member, okay? Because you can see, right? BD over there, at E there, uh, in the middle of it, and it has a force there. Then FC, the same. Here it has a force there. And then here it has a force as well, so in the middle as well. AC at B there, it has a force. So uh, the all those three members 
uh, the forces is not just happening at both ends. So all of those are non the force member. Okay. Okay, so Audrey, uh, the first thing that you're supposed to do for this particular problem is to uh, simplify the problem because we can simplify it by solving the pulley first. Okay, Audrey? Yes, yeah, sir. For the pulley there, okay, what forces that we have? There's if we take, hmm? okay, 300. 300 LBF, yeah. What else? Then tension force. Tension, yeah. Tension, what else? And then on the way, there's normal. Uh, normal? Okay. What do you mean by normal? It's a pin at T, right? Oh. If it's a pin at T, so most likely it will be what? Well, there's reaction force. Like yep, DX. reaction forces. Well, it will be dy and dx, right? Yes. Yeah. Like that. Okay. Using sigma moment at T equal to zero, can you find uh, the value of T there? It's supposed to be here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the radius is one feet. So, 300 multiplied by one minus t multiplied by one equal to zero, right? Hello, Audrey. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, what is the value of t? It's supposed to be 300, okay? Now, using sigma fx equal to zero, what you have there, Audrey? Tension and x. dx, right? Okay, so t minus dx equal to zero. t is already known, 300 LPF minus dx is. So dx will be 300 LPF. <coughs> now the last one, you six sigma fy equal to zero. What you have? Uh, the weight. Okay, we have dy and weight. dy minus 300 LPF is equal to zero. dy is equal to 300 LPF. So we have dy, dx, and t there. <coughs> uh, now, I want you to uh, modify the uh, whole uh, free body diagram, okay? I want you to uh, try to uh, solve the whole free body diagram to simplify the problem. So basically, when we solve, we, when we try to solve for the frame and the machine, okay, we can try to define it directly, or if it's possible, we can try to solve for the external forces when all the members are still joined together. Do you get it, Audrey? Yes, sir. Hmm. Now, uh, using this, right, I want you to solve for the whole free body diagram first. Uh, okay. So this one is the whole pre-pay diagram. Okay. Okay. I just want to solve for the full free pay diagram first. So I draw all of this member together, but <clears throat> the pulley, I already replaced the pulley with the force. I want to replace the pulley with the force. Okay. So can you help me to draw the all the forces which is happening here, Audrey? Yes. This one is A. This one is F. OK. 
Okay. At A, what is happening at A, Audrey? Is it a pin yeah. joint or roller joint? Uh, pin joint. Pin joint. If it's pin joint, then we have to replace the uh, the pin with what forces, Audrey? Reaction forces. Yeah, reaction forces. We have two. Okay, a y, a x. Okay, at F there, it's a roller joint. So the reaction forces because of roller joint is supposed to be what, Audrey? Yes, F y. Only F y. Yeah. Okay. Now take a look at D. Remember, we already saw for this. So at D there, uh, what forces that we have there? We have the UI and DX. UI DX to the left and up there in the pulley. But here, it's supposed to be action and reaction, right? Yeah, so dy is supposed to be going to the left and dx dy is supposed to be going down like this a a dy with dx. Oof, we know the value, so we have to put it there. What else there, Audrey? What forces that we're supposed to put in this particular free body diagram, Audrey? The other joint, like. Sorry? Um, is it like the reaction from like the tension? This one you mean? Yes. Okay. That one is correct. We're supposed to put T here, okay? And the value of T is T300 LPF as well. So this is basically <coughs> the, uh, the whole free body diagram, okay? So remember, uh, when we try to solve for the uh, uh, for the thrust problem, sorry, for the frame or machine problem, okay, sometimes you can use this kind of method. Try to solve for the whole free body diagram if, if the number of unknowns of the whole free body diagram is three or less. Okay, in this case, you can see uh, uh, at the, uh, if we take a look at the whole free body diagram, Okay, the external forces there is only three because A there, there is two, F there, there is only one. So we only have three, AX, AY, and FY. So we can solve this. Okay, that's why the first thing that I do is not separate the system into a individual freeway diagram, but to solve the whole freeway diagram first. And after that, then we can solve for the individual, uh, individual member like that. Okay, this one can we solve for AX, AY, and FY output? Yes, sir. Yeah, we can solve it, right? We can solve it using sigma FX equals zero, sigma FY equals zero, and sigma moment equals zero to solve for this three, because those three is now our unknowns, okay? After solving for those three, then we can separate the two force member. We can separate all the member there, okay? I will not try to calculate all the results here, okay? What is the result of sigma fx, okay? Then. Anyway, uh, I believe it's supposed to be enough time. I will try to calculate it for you guys. Using sigma moment equal to zero, sigma moment at A equal to zero, okay, we will be able to find Fy. Okay, the Fy there is supposed to be 
Fy multiply by 6 uh, minus 300 dy multiply by what is that? Multiply by 9. And then dx dx multiply by uh, plus 300 dx multiply by 4 feet. Okay. <clears throat> then minus t. 300 t multiply by uh, that one supposed to be 5. Equal to zero. So from here we will be able to find F Y. Okay. From here we will be able to find F Y. And after that, uh, using sigma F Y equal to zero, we will be able to find F Y. And then using sigma F X equal to zero, we will be able to find A X. Okay. Those three will be there. Uh, we can find it. Then after that, uh, we have to check each of those uh, individual free body diagram one by one. Okay. For example, I will try to take a look at member AC first. Member AC there. This is what we have. Member AC there. It's like this. Okay, for member AC there, the forces will be happening at A, B, and C. Okay, A is already known. B and C is not yet known. There is a pin there. So there will be B, X, B, Y, and C, X, C, Y. Okay, uh, we cannot solve that. Okay, then if we take a look at member uh, CF, okay, F there is already known, F Y already known, E X C Y is not yet known, C X C Y is not yet known. Then if we take a look at member B D, there will be B X B Y and E X C Y, something like that. Uh, okay, let me draw all the free bay diagram. So this one is AC, there will be AX, AY. But remember, AX, AY here, we already find the value from the whole free body diagram. So this one is already known, this one is already known. Then PX, PY. Then CX, CY. Okay, so this is our free body diagram. AC, free body diagram for AC. Okay, the next one, I want to see the free body diagram of CF. Okay, CF there, we have FY that is already known from here. Fy is already known. What else? Ex, Ey. I will draw it like this. Ex, Ey. What else there? There will be C, X, Cy. But remember, C, X, Cy, I already draw it here, going left and up. <clears throat> so because it's action and reaction, I need to draw in this particular free body diagram, going down, and left because it's action and reaction. Okay. <clears throat> then we take a look at member BD. Okay. Member BD there, it will be like this.
P. At P, there will be P, X, P, Y. But remember, here we already draw it. So it will be action and reaction with that. So it's supposed to be going the opposite direction of that. Remember, it's supposed to be uh, action and reaction. If we draw two join, uh, one join at two different free body diagram, it's supposed to be action and reaction. So PY will be going down. PX will be going to the left. Okay. Then there will be EX, EY as well. It will be action and reaction with this one. So if that one is up and right, it's supposed to be going down and left. PY and EX. Action and reaction. Okay, then at T. Uh, we can just use dx dy then. Each of those is 300 Newton from the one that is already known. Okay, LBF. LBF. Okay. But remember, okay, from all of this free body diagram, this one, this one, and this one. All of those three already known from the first free body diagram. From the first free body diagram, we already know the value of AX, AY, and FY. Okay. Uh, still, Audrey. Hello, Audrey. Uh, Audrey, would you mind? To calculate the total unknown uh, uh, the total unknown values here. How many unknowns that we have here? Out. Hello. Uh -huh. Yeah, how many unknowns that we have here already? Um, four. Four? Are you sure four? Wait. We have PX, PY. One, two. Okay, these are the same. So we have two PX, PY. We have CX, CY. Four, okay, the same here as well, CXCY. So we have four, EX, BY, CXCY, and we have EXEY. Okay, so in total, we have six, PX, BY, CXCY, EX, EXEY, six unknown. And remember here, we have three free body diagram. We have three free body diagram. And it's free body diagram, we have three uh, equilibrium equation, sigma fx, sigma fy, and sigma moment. So in total, we have nine equations. Uh, maybe some of you will question me. Sir, how come, how come we have nine equations and we only have six unknowns? Okay, remember, we already use the uh, whole free body diagram to solve for the uh, reaction forces, okay? Uh, if we don't do that, okay, EX, EY, sorry, AX, AY, and FY is still not yet known. So in total, there will be nine unknowns, okay? In that case, we can use this three free body diagram to solve for all of those unknowns, including the reaction forces. But because we already solved for the reaction forces, in this case, we only need to solve for six unknowns in that, uh, which means we can use only, uh, it is for us, okay, for us, uh, it is possible for us to just use two of this free body diagram, okay, 
we can just use two of this uh, free body diagram to solve for it. So basically, this we will have a three unknowns, uh, three equations. This will be, we will have three equation. This we will have three equation as well. So basically, without solving this, without solving the uh, the uh, the whole free body diagram for the external forces, we still can solve it. Okay. So there are several ways to solve for the uh there are several ways to solve for the frame and machine problem okay the simplest one is just to follow this you don't have to solve for the external forces using the whole free body diagram but just divide it directly after you solve for the all the external forces so using this we have nine equations we have nine unknowns which we can solve like that okay do you get it, Audrey? Yes, sir. There are several other examples here that can be your homework later. So you can try to, uh, uh, try to practice uh, with the frame problem. This is another case of a frame problem, but here uh, we have so many uh, two force member, A, B, B, G, B, G, A, G, G, C, C, F, okay? D, E, F, E are two force member. <coughs> so the, uh, the, the way to solve it, it may be uh, combination of uh, how to solve a two for a uh, truss and how to solve a frame like that. Maybe I will just give this problem to you guys to try to solve, okay? Uh, this as well is a frame case. In this case, uh, we are asked to find out the force at the hydraulic, A, B, and C, D. And if you take a look at that, those two hydraulic is actually two force member. AB, uh, the, the member only have a force at both and CD, the member only have force at both ends only. So CD and AB is two force member. Okay. <coughs> and then the non two force member, they are non to force member of course yes the non to force member will be this and this okay because it's only one hour it, it is not enough time for me to explain everything uh i will just uh give some of this problem as your homework and try your best to solve it by yourself uh next week on thursday and friday uh, we will uh, discuss again about those. Okay, we will discuss again about those. Okay, this is another case of a, a frame problem. Yeah. So basically, we have two uh, parts, and those two parts is connected at A. So A there is pin, like that. So try to. Uh, I will just give this problem to you guys. Try to solve it first. And uh, next week we will discuss for it. Okay. Try to solve it as your homework first. And next week we will discuss for it. There are several uh, interesting examples here. Okay. Uh, because at 8 30, you have to uh, get in the Zoom of the uh, Introduction to Engineering exam. Uh, I think that's all for today. Uh, okay, see you guys again on Thursday next week. And remember to check your edutext for your homework. Okay, I think that's all for today.
uh, see you guys next week. Bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.